Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. And um, today I thought I'd um, talk about um, heart attacks, okay? And um, let me start off by asking you a question. Do you know anyone who's had a heart attack? Uh, and I'm sure that the answer is yes, because um, heart attacks are incredibly common. Um, and there are two types of patient, really. There are those patients who say they've been getting chest pains and uh, they say, oh, I was getting chest pains and um, uh, the pains were getting worse and worse. And I went to the hospital and they said I was going to have a heart attack. And luckily I had, I had some stents put in um, and thank God that saved my life. And then there are other patients who, who you know, are completely fit and well in you. You just hear, oh my God, he's had a heart attack and he's dropped down dead. Or suddenly, out of the blue, there's been a heart attack. And so today I wanted to talk to you um, about heart attacks, okay? Because uh, this is by, uh, by and large one of the largest killers in uh, the Western world. And um, there is a lot you can do to try and avoid having a heart attack. And I thought I'd talk you through heart attacks and... Um, and why heart attacks happen, okay? So the first thing to talk about is that any muscle in your body needs blood, okay, to function. So if, um, if I have my bicep, my bicep needs blood, you know, it needs uh, to be supplied by blood so that it can get oxygen, oxygen sustains my muscle. The heart is also a muscle and it's working all the time and therefore it needs blood and it needs blood all the time okay and the blood is delivered to the heart muscle by three heart arteries okay they're called the coronary arteries and we're all uh, equipped with three small arteries uh, which are very small uh, and embedded within the heart but they supply different parts of the heart so the whole of the heart is getting the blood but different parts of the heart are getting blood from one of the three arteries. And essentially what a heart attack is, is that if you block the supply uh, of blood from one, any one of these arteries, then that part of the heart will not get the blood it needs, and therefore it will start suffocating. And as it starts suffocating, it cries out, and that is manifested as discomfort in the chest, like a tightness in the chest, um, and uh, if nothing is done, then that leads to a heart attack. And the problem with a heart attack is that um, during that time when the heart is devoid of blood, uh, the heart um, becomes very weak. It is not able to pump blood around, and it can, it can um, then fail, or it can become very irritable because it's not getting the blood, and it can go into a funny rhythm, which can be very fast, and eventually cause someone to uh, die i.e. cardiac arrest and die. Okay, so um, heart attacks are bad news. Now, the way to try and work this out is this. Think car and think of the car requiring fuel. That's like your heart requiring blood, okay? And the fuel is delivered to the engine of the car through a fuel pipe. Those are your coronary arteries. Now, what can happen is that over a number of years, you start developing wear and tear in the pipe that takes the fuel to the engine, all right? And the things that can cause this wear and tear are age, um, high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, um, genetics, um, cholesterol, and that can, these can all cause wear and tear. And as you get more and more wear and tear, the um, you can develop a narrowing of the um, of the pipe that is taking the fuel to the engine so you can do, you can start getting more and more buildup of crud in that vessel and eventually what tends to happen is the the buildup gets to the extent that it starts actually uh, being obstructive to the flow of blood to the heart okay uh, however this happens very slowly and um, it can take a number of years for this to happen. And generally what tends to happen is that the patient or the person will be fine and then they will start noticing that at extreme exertion or on heavy exertion, when the heart is asking for a lot more blood, i.e. you're driving the engine very fast, it needs a lot more 
fuel, uh, but because there is a narrowing in the pipe that takes the fuel to the engine, the fuel can't get through quick enough, and therefore the engine starts asking for more or crying out, uh, and that then manifests as chest pain. So a lot of people will say to me, oh, I can walk a certain distance, um, and after that, if particularly if I'm going up a hill or it's very cold and my heart is beating fast, I get this tightness or this discomfort, like someone's sitting on my chest and I have to stop. And as I stop, the discomfort goes away, i.e. when the car's going very fast, the fuel can't get through quick enough. And as the car slows down, the fuel is able to go and supply the engine. And so the car is okay. And that is what a a lot of people come to me and um, you know they'll say I can walk I could walk a mile now I can only walk half a mile um, because I get the discomfort and I have to stop after half a mile and if you don't do anything this continues to build up and they'll come back and say I can now only walk a quarter of a mile and um, eventually if you don't do anything at all this then leads to a heart attack now this kind of patient is very different to the kind of patient that has a sudden heart attack with no warning. We all know people who are completely well, who go to the gym and suddenly out of the blue have a heart attack. No warning, just there and then. And often some of these unfortunately die. Now, these patients have a very different mechanism uh, of having a heart attack, okay? Because by very virtue, if you are getting a narrowing that is building up over a period of time, then that narrowing gives you a warning. You know, you get the warning. It would be a very um, foolhardy person who would ignore these symptoms, you know, if they've been going on for several months and they're beginning to limit their activity, it would be a very foolhardy person to say, well, I'm not going to seek help. Most people who get these symptoms find that their exercise capacity is so limited that they actually go and seek help. So, in some ways, having this warning is protective for you, you know. So, a lot of people, um, um, then go and have, have these um, have their tests and they find that there is a significant narrowing and they go and have a stent or a bypass and they come back and they tell the tale where they said, if it hadn't been picked up, I would have died. Yes, it's possibly true, but generally the very fact that they've been getting enough symptoms tells us that they would have sought help anyway. They're, they're not as worrying as those people who suddenly out of the blue have a heart attack. So you have to ask yourself, what is the... Um, for in those people who have no warning and in those people there is a very different and very sinister mechanism and I just wanted to explain this to you because a lot of people don't realize it um, now what you can get sometimes is this you get a little bit of crud in the heart artery in the fuel pipe but that crud is not actually obstructing flow of blood or flow of fuel from the fuel tank to the engine it's not obstructing it so the fuel the, so the engine is running fine uh, but there is a little bit of crud okay now what can happen sometimes is that a little bit of that crud can break off and if it breaks off what happens is the body thinks that you've sustained a wound in that area which has been left as a result of that crud falling off it's like a bit of crust you know that falls off and that bit that is left behind looks like a wound and the body therefore forms a blood clot to try and control that wound and on, inadvertently that blood clot actually blocks off the fuel pipe altogether and that can happen within a matter of a few minutes and so suddenly from nothing something breaks off and suddenly the body decides to form a blood clot and that then obstructs the blood getting to the heart and that causes a sudden heart attack. And those are the people, that is how people can get have heart attacks without warning. And those are the most sinister type of heart attacks you can have because there is no warning. It can happen at any time. So it's really important then to, to say, well, okay, how do I go about minimizing my chances of having this? How, how do I go about minimizing my chances? The truth is, very few there is no technology at the moment which will tell you if you look at the heart artery as to which bit of crud could break off and cause this you know all you can do is look at the bits of crud which are causing the most narrowing 
okay? But the narrowings would cause a warning. So you can fix a narrowing, but it's not necessarily the narrowing that will cause the sudden heart attack. It's the bits of crud which are probably not even causing a narrowing, but for some reason are very unstable. I, I very unstable. So when we look at this, we try and work out, well, what are the things that make bits of crud unstable? And the secret is that the thing that makes bits of crud unstable is inflammation, okay? Uh, the more inflamed you are, the more likely you are to have crud breaking off and causing heart attacks, uh, okay? And so, whereas a lot of people concentrate very much on blood pressure and that's okay and diabetes and that's fine and cholesterol it's very important to bear in mind that the things that really inflame you are things like a stress okay b lack of sleep c lack of exercise d um, smoking because every time you smoke you're taking a hit you're inflaming yourself you're putting stuff in your body which isn't meant to be there that's a hit and if you have an unstable area even one cigarette you know the just the hit from that could cause a plaque to break off and form a clot and um, nutrition a lot of people nutrition is really um, you know uh, neglected because we're always taking in good um, uh, bad food you know even supermarket food is bad food because we don't know how it's been grown we don't know what fertilizers and chemicals have been put in it um, we don't know how it's been preserved and we um, you know we go we go to our supermarket we look at something we think oh wow that looks healthy let's take that but actually we don't know what's gone beyond what's gone on behind that food uh, before it is placed uh, on our tables and therefore it's really important just to be conscious of that it's very very important to try and reduce your stress levels it's very important try to try and eat healthy ideally local grown fresh food uh, it's very important to get regular exercise because we know regular gentle exercise is anti-inflammatory we know sudden unaccustomed exercise is pro-inflammatory so it's not uncommon when someone you know suddenly does something which is very very exertional uh, ver and they're not accustomed to it that can cause heart attacks however we know that people who are doing gradual exercise that you know who are not doing anything too he heavy uh, in those people the exercise is protective having sleep is really important as well if you don't go if you go without sleep you know how inflamed you get you know you can fall you fall ill and therefore having good amounts of sleep cutting down in your stress levels getting regular good exercise having the right mindset is incredibly important avoiding smoking is really important avoiding recreational drugs like cocaine etc is really important um you know being in the rat race um being uh, being uh, well how do i say this um being happy is important being happy is incredibly anti-inflammatory you know uh, uh, being relaxed is really important and so we also know that certain tablets are anti-inflammatory and in particular statins the reason they work is not because they lower the cholesterol a lot of people think oh my cholesterol isn't high why are they giving me statins the reason statins work is because they have been found to be anti-inflammatory and they stabilize plaque and that is why what we know is that things like bypasses and stents don't really prolonged life you know those people who come and say oh well look you know i had this stent put in otherwise i would have died no what would have happened is if you didn't have the stent you would still have your symptoms of chest discomfort when you walked uh, and now that you have the stent the discomfort is gone but actually the stent isn't tackling that area of the heart vessel that would have likely caused the sudden heart attack that area is somewhere else you can't see you can't pick out which of the slight narrowings is going to suddenly misbehave. And that's why the only thing you can do is to try and modify your lifestyle, try and pay attention to what you're eating, pay attention to exercise, pay attention to avoiding cigarettes, pay attention to getting enough sleep, and pay attention to your mindset. Okay, so um, I hope this was helpful. Um, don't hesitate to get in touch should you need to. 
Uh, I'll try and do some more videos. It's just been quite busy recently, but uh, I'm really, really grateful for all the amazing feedback you've given me about the videos. You can get in touch with me through Facebook if you wanted to, or Twitter, or if you wanted to speak to me, you can uh, do so through my secretary, Jeanette, uh, and she's on this number. My website is www.yourcardiology.co.uk. Uh, feel free to give me a uh, send me a message and I promise to respond. Um, uh, and that's it. Thank you so much for listening. All the best. Take care. Bye.